Hello and welcome back. Today I'm going to be doing a simple video where I show you my Minecraft world and creations that I've made. Something nice and simple. So we're starting off inside a nice little house here. Excuse this gentleman. This is a little village I found by the sea when I was exploring before going further north into the the Frostlands. I figured this would be a nice place to start because it uh, it gives us a journey into uh, my home castle base, if you'd call it that. Just a nice little place. I also just kind of wanted to talk about the design, just the philosophy behind some of the things I made. Because I, I used Minecraft as a as an expression of creativity of what I could what I could accomplish with architecture and other design elements. So we're gonna be taking a boat ride along the coast to a little town called Himmelsdorf. It's just showcasing some of the beautiful mountains that are generated. When I seeded this world, I used a, a very long string of random numbers with a long string of repeating numbers at the very end, and I think that gave the world very tall mountains that shoot up from the ground in the ocean. I think it gives a very, very epic feel that reminds me very much of Lord of the Rings or... other pieces of fantasy media, like that lava waterfall right there. So, I started playing Minecraft when it, about a couple years after it first came out, back in 2012. And I played it for a little bit, and I thought it was fun, and whenever I made things, I always tried to incorporate the designs to blend in with the natural environment and to not necessarily stand out from the natural landscape. I thought that was an interesting challenge and it it, it blended the artificial with the natural. And I stopped playing it for a while and then I picked it back up in uh, September after at least five years of not playing it. And uh, I, I first began to build things much like that, blending into the environment, but as I went on, I found that I'm, I more and more desired to build something that stood out from the natural landscape rather than blend it in with it. And I'm not really sure why, I know that that reflects a certain change in mentality and philosophy. But, uh, I don't know, it, it's hard to explain, but essentially I wanted things to stand out. To use the environment as a guide, but not be, not be bound by it. You'll see more of it when I get there, but that's essentially, that's what drove me to create the designs that I did. And also, I was very much inspired by the Lord of the Rings films from uh, John Howe's design and artwork that he put on making the film. Very, very tall, long lines, very bold faces, that sort of thing. I've always enjoyed Minecraft as a as a uh, a tool of exploration not of just of exploring an environment, but also of exploring your own mind. What, what can you create given a certain amount of tools? Especially in, in survival mode, which I, I much prefer to creative mode. I mean, obviously with creative mode you can do anything you really want, but survival mode forces you to make compromises and also to force yourself to work around limitations 
Like in creative mode, you can build anything you want with any block you want, but in survival mode, you first have to mine it. You have to refine it, then you have to build scaffolding to do it. It's something that it places real constraints and restrictions on what you can do, and I believe that contributes to a more artistic approach and artistic endeavor because you have to you have to force yourself to change and adapt which grows you as an artist and as a person as opposed to be just being able to place whatever you want whenever you want i don't think that i don't think that allows you to grow so that's why I prefer survival mode, even for building things. And there's also the aspect of, you know, in survival mode, if you decide, well, you know, I really want to build this tower out of polished diorite, I need to find diorite. So you have to be in exploring, you have to make sacrifices, stock up an equipment, and go out into the world and find that vein of diorite. And work hard at it and maybe halfway through mining the diary decide, wow, this is taking too much time. Maybe I might scale back my design or change something and in that way you grow. So in the distance that's the white tower. That's uh my prized creation. So this is the vi the small village of Himmelsdorf and I, I built this road all the way to it, leading from my home base. That's a, a bridge that I made that I wanted to... I wanted to build as if it was a, a grand staircase leading you down royally into the, the Valley of Himmelsdorf. I wanted something that gave a grand sense of scale and austerity. And as you come up, you ascend into it. It's not simply not simply just a bridge. That's a wooden bridge that I tried to make as close to what a real bridge would look like as possible. Because again, I, I really enjoy creating things that have a, a certain realism to them. It makes it more tangible, more, you appreciate the design more. You can see stone pillars, wooden supports. I continue along Heading west, across a little footbridge. Down there is a mine that I had to build to get all the uh, stone needed. And so this is just a little hut halfway through the path, and I figured, well, if this was a real path between a village and my castle, and a traveler was on the road and found himself at night, it'd be nice to have a place to you know, bed down in comfort and security and act as a waypoint between the two. So, that's why I built that. It's, it's something that would be real if this were a real thing. We draw closer to the White Tower and the top of this bridge shouldn't seem special, but I spent an, a large amount of time attempting to make it as much as I could a a stone arch bridge as I can. You can see how I had to reduce the angles into an arch. I took a lot of time, a lot of figuring out when to use upside down staircases and when to use uh, rock tiles and full bricks. And the result looks like something real. And you can just see the village of Himmelsdorf in the distance. And so that is my home, something that I on and off spend about six months building. Obviously not every single day, but every other day, a couple hours there, a couple hours here. A lot of time and effort went into that because I wanted to make it something special, something evocative of the philosophy of what I think buildings and structures should be. 
something something special that reflected a certain uh, personal input into the design. I just wanted to hold this here and let the sunset catch it in the distance. As you can see, the white tower isn't just a tower, it's also a lighthouse, a beacon. It originally started off with just a simple stone pillar to use as a marker for where my base was, but over time it gradually evolved into bigger and bigger structures. I would tear them down, build it up again, and redesign, reapproach, till eventually I settled on the design you see there, which is heavily inspired by uh, John Howe's work, which is something that is almost evocative of an Art Deco appearance, but there's something, something more timeless to it because of the simplicity. Over there is a little mine that I used to mine diorite and gold and leads to a Grand Canyon. But I won't be showing this video, it's not really relevant. As you can see, I built my walls high. I wanted to be I wanted it to be something that was a bastion against the wild wilderness around it. I wanted something that stood on its own and was safe and secure. So here we have the water entrance. There's the peak of the white tower with the lights, which are, I believe, are 32 redstone lamps. That took me quite a while to build. Originally it was torches, but I decided I want something more permanent. As you can see, the, the tower gets narrower as it goes to the top, something that's evocative of pointing toward the heaven, something that makes it stand out. It, it inspires the eye to follow it to the top and then past the tower to the sky. I wanted, I wanted a building that above all else represented what I believed architecture should do, which is inspire greatness, inspire people to achieve more, give a, a sense of heroism. I mean, sure, it's just Minecraft, but I think it matters. So this is something I wanted to do, is to blend two colors and show them in a union heading towards something, which is my house, which originally I wanted to, to make sort of like a, almost like an art deco castle, but it ended up looking more like a, a modern Mormon temple. Not really sure how that happened, but that's how it did. This whole hillside used to be wild trees and zombies and skeletons roaming everywhere, but I, I tamed it, I leveled it out, I set up defenses. And I also made this waterfall out of this little pool right here. I figured if this was something real, it'd be nice to have a little place that you could sit with your friends and just observe the weather while you're safe and secure under here. A little, a cozy cove. So this leads to the garden farm area. Some small wheat field and a super sized oak tree. Hard to see at night, but it's, it's a, it's a monstrous tree. And again, I wanted to add a bit of realism to it, so. Here is a, a farm with some hay, a couple barrels on the side. It's something that, if, if you were to take all of this and put it in the real world, it would, it would be plausible. Like this garden. I want it to be something that, even in the standards of Minecraft, would have a certain beauty to it. So this is my home. Again, I wanted something bold, wanted something evocative of security, but also of, of beauty. I wanted, I, 
a heroic space inside of the house by vaulting the ceiling toward the top and this grand chandelier that took me a while to figure out how to make, originally with wood and torches, then I decided to go all out. And this grand window facing west to catch the sunset. A raised bed to signify the height of the person sleeping in it. Not something low, but raised above the ground. And down here, even though it's a workshop, I wanted something beautiful. I had glowstone and magma in a pattern. Something that was dwarven, almost. And so we're going to uh, now go to the Red Keep. This wasn't uh, recorded live, by the way. This is a voiceover. It's the entrance to the mine. To the left is the chapel and party ground, and there's the red keep. And I wanted this wall to be bright yellow because I want it to be evocative, reflective of the setting sun, something that connected the home and the sun together, even though they're infinitely far apart. This is the Red Keep. This is the the watchtower of the keep of the castle. I built that waterfall as well to that little area across the bridge. This is a place of it's a place of domination, but also of security. I wanted to pay that proper respect to the design. Something that's all seeing. Right there, that's the the elevated bridge and party area, which leads to a chapel. And we're go I'm just going to show you the the Red Keep courtyard built around a large oak tree. Something that if you're lost in the wilderness and you approach it from the north, you have a place of sanctuary and safety. And now I'm going to take you on a small tour of the party grounds. Across the Keep Bridge. With this, I wanted something that incorporated the environment, so I built it through a large tree. Something that you can imagine people walking, talking, meetings. So this is the party ground here. You have a nice little covered walkway around a central area. And then this, I imagine being sort of like a, a, a dance floor you know, underlit by magma rock. You can imagine royal delegations and nobles coming here to dance and converse. And since I, I wanted to build something that was evocative of a fantasy medieval time, I eventually ended up building a chapel and putting a, a gold crucifix on top of it because I figured if this was something vaguely medieval, then Christianity was something that was important in the culture and uh, intrinsically linked to the design philosophy. So I wanted to just express that, that, that potentiality with the chapel. There's a little shot of the bridge. The bridge is one of the first things I ever made, besides a small hut where the house now stands. So now we're going to go back across the bridge and give you just a, a brief tour of the mine I created. Again, I, I really, really enjoy that little passage through the tree. It reminds me of something I might have saw as a kid 
walking on a covered bridge at the zoo. And so here's something. This is safety scaffolding. Again, I wanted something, something that was real, something that just by looking at it, you knew what it was based on the form and the function. Speaking of which, so this is the nether portal, and I figured, well, if I'm going to be building a nether portal, I would want it deep underground, and I would want it surrounded by iron cages to keep something that may be coming out of it secure. And this mine goes all the way down to the bedrock. It's a sign that says Grossa Cavern. You're going to see a few signs in uh, improper German. I've been learning German for a couple years now and in, in college for my degree, and I fell in love with the language, so I just wanted to add something that I loved to the world, which is German. I think it's a beautiful language. It's a klein in mind with magma pool, which means to the small mine in magma pool. And, you know, I, I think if you add something at least suggestive of something that you love to what you build, then you can really let its spirit come through. Because I think if you try to force something or try to create something without a personal emotion behind it, I think you do yourself a disservice by not allowing yourself to fully express what you could. Love is a powerful emotion and it can be used to create all sorts of things. So, that's a tour of the castle itself. Here's a better shot of the White Tower in the daylight. You can see how the lines rescind towards the top. I'm very proud of that. That Originally, that entire sculpture was made out of cobblestone. And I tore the entire thing down and replaced it with polished diorite, which took a very long time. And uh, I've sort of reached a point with Minecraft where I've explored pretty much everything I wanted to explore architecturally with it. And uh, I probably won't play it for another couple years or so if it's still around then. So that's why I made this video. I just wanted to give a a brief overview of it. There we go. Tsuhoto and Kerka means to hut and mine. Actually, the word in German. I wrote the other sign without knowing what the the word for mine was in German. So this goes to the the mining hut again. I built this road myself because I wanted to I wanted to connect things together not just have them be out in the wild. This leads to a extremely large mine that I found just while aimlessly exploring one day, and it was so big that I decided, wow, I need a I need a, a place of refuge, a smaller base over here. So I built I built this little uh this little mining hut. And obviously it could have been something extremely basic. It could have been a square cobblestone with a door and a bed, but I wanted I wanted it to look real, so I gave it a porch, put it on elevated, gave it a, a roof that could slant rain, and I even gave it a little fireplace. So this little house, this uh, this is essentially a a place to spend the night and to craft whatever is brought from the mine. A little bed under here. There's a little workshop. Like I've been saying, something something real, something tangible that you can you have a sense of familiarity to that makes it more real. 
So this little pathway leads to the mine, which originally was just a small hole in the side of the mountain that I, I kept digging, and then I found this room with a treasure chest, so I, I kept digging and found another tunnel and another tunnel and kept going and until eventually I, I found a mine, one of those abandoned ghost mines underground created by some civilization hundreds of thousands of years ago, maybe. The mine is so big that if I were to show it, it would take me almost half an hour just by myself, so I won't do that. I'll just attempt to give a sense of scale of how big this thing is. And all this, by the way, really wasn't carved about by me. I'll block here and there and open up passages, but this is all naturally generated. And right now I'm attempting to show you the main area. We're just going to ignore that zombie. Probably nothing important. Ooh, that's not good. That's not relaxing at all. Oh, that's really not good. Oh, no. I wonder if I can escape. Oh, no. Oh, I got hit again. Uh-oh, this isn't good. It's all gone wrong. Oh. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video showcasing my world before I died. This will probably be the last time I ever play this world, so this is also a farewell to my creations. I haven't posted in a while, but I'm going to be posting more videos very soon, so stick around and I hope you enjoy those as well. Thanks again for watching, and take care.